were just talking. We, we both, neither of us had COVID, and we're going to give it to each other. That's our plan tonight. Well, hopefully not. That's hopefully not. No. So I'm going to, we've been talking about AI, and I had uh, the Moderna chairman here talking about AlphaFold, which is an, the latest example of using that. So I'm going to throw to a clip from you in 2016 with Walt Mossberg. Uh, interview six years ago. It, uh, your assessment was that five to 10 years would be close to conversation AI. AI. Let's play that first. What makes you think you can do this Google uh, Home hardware product better than Amazon has done Echo? You just heard Kara say she has a lovely relationship with Alexa. <laughs> How are you going to break that? How are you going to get get her off that? Uh, you know, uh, part of it is uh, you know I think you know the you know in the next five to ten years, building the uh, true conversational understanding and being able to uh, have the dialogue, I think, is where we plan to differentiate. Uh, the hardware is just a manifestation of that. We want to help people use that to get things done. And so there's a lot of work ahead. I think either be it Amazon or anyone else, us, we are at the one person stage of what we can do here in this space. Okay, so let's talk about where we are then, when you were talking about, when you listen to yourself to make those predictions then, where do you think we are? First of all, it's good to see Walt. And, it's good to see um, Walt. It brings back memories having yeah. done this. Congrats on how you've Thank taken you. it. Happy birthday, Lucky. No, you know, it's, it's a great question. And, you know, around that time, you know, when I became CEO, I kind of pivoted the company to what, what we call this AI first approach. Mm -hmm. I just feel like no difference from when the internet came or desktop to mobile. Uh, it's an even bigger transition. Mm -hmm. uh, when I fast forward to now, uh, AI is kind of built into all our products. You know, even if you take search, the quality improvements we've gotten by now, being able to understand voice, video, images, text, both from an input standpoint and also looking at the information standpoint and putting it all together, it's pretty profound. Uh, conversational AI, I, I don't think it's fully transformed yet by AI. Yeah. Uh, we are still in the handcrafted stage of doing things. The end-to-end -end learned conversational AI system, I think, is a few years out. But if you look at all the work undergoing with language models, mm -hmm. I'm afraid to again say five to ten years because you're going to play a clip yes, <laughs> in the future back yeah. to me again. No, I'm not going to be no. there. But okay. no. no, I'll be in Hawaii. But you, good luck. You will be there, Kara. Okay. So, okay. But uh, you know, so, but I, I, I think there's work left to do. But it is very, very exciting, though. So talk about these investments, making an AI. I remember when you did that because they were doing a lot of things. They yeah. were a lot of places. Yeah. Um, uh, it, very much like their, the founder's personality, very interested in a lot of things. Yeah. How did you do that? Because you weren't the founder, obviously. I met you when you were running Chrome, remember? Um, when you we were... shipped the comic book to you accidentally. Yes, you did. You called me upon it. Yes, I did. Labor um, Day 14 years ago. Yes, that is true. Um, <laughs> um, they st stupidly uh, shipped me a comic book that because they forgot that things didn't get, it actually what happened was they you shipped it to someone in Europe who then sent me all the That's pictures right, yeah. of it. Um, and so I called Sundar, I'm like, oh, Chrome, here's all the details. And he's like, who told you? And I'm like, you did. Uh, so they had sent me in, and I, we, we spent a lot of time, he was lovely about it. And your PR people weren't as lovely. Um, but in any case, um, you, what, what did you do to shift that? How did you think about, why did that what you thought was most important? Look, I, you know, when you have many products and people are working on it, if you need to shift something foundational across the company, you need to get everyone's attention. Mm -hmm. And so mobile first was a big thing a lot of us had thought about. You mm -hmm. know, Google came in the desktop era, and so to shift it to mobile was a big goal. So we had talked about internally as being mobile first. So to using the same thing, the same framing. There were many people who were still skeptical of AI internally, particularly mm -hmm. uh, in our search teams, et cetera. They really didn't think it could you know, be used effectively. Mm -hmm. So to capture that shift, to tell everyone this is as big as a mobile shift, and you know, I always thought, I've said this before, I think it's one of the most profound things we're working on as humanity, and so, you know, wanted to make sure the company snapped up and shifted, so it was a big call to arms. We have processes like OKR, so we wrote goals for the company, mm -hmm. and you know, if I look at what Google AI and DeepMind has done, uh, you know. That was a purchase you made. Uh, right? Yeah, with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the founders. But, you know, extraordinary teams. I heard about AlphaFold earlier, or a lot of the transformer work that underpins a lot of language models was done at Google. And so we're committed to being state of the art. We are using it across our products. 
I also think through cloud, giving it to others will end up being one of the most important things we end up doing there as well. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the investments you're making, how would you add them up when you think about it? Is it? Are you an AI company more than a search company? Although you're doing rather well in search, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, how do you look at the company then? Because Satya has done this up at Microsoft in a different way, not AI, but a different kind of focus, enterprise. I do think of horizontally, if there's one thing that underpins Google and the other bets in Alphabet, it is applying, historically, we would think of it as deep computer science, but it's increasingly AI. Mm -hmm. So to me, what makes search better is the same as what is going to help us solve self-driving cars mm -hmm. or robotics or partner with pharmaceutical companies to help solve Mm -hmm. our drug, you know, drug discovery. I think the technology that underpins, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so is AI, and so that's how I think about what we do foundationally. Who do you consider your competitors in this area? Uh, look, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about being in tech is, uh, you know, competition comes from nowhere. Uh, you know, none of us were talking about TikTok three years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be open-minded, uh, open-minded. In the big, big areas we do, uh, what I think is knowledge and information and then computing, uh, obviously, you know, we compete with, uh, be it Amazon, Apple, mm -hmm. Microsoft, AI, right. Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, emerging competitors like TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube. So uh, I think it, it keeps growing. Uh, I'm not even mentioning the competitors from China or someone, you know, mm -hmm. the Tencent and Alibaba and the ByteDancers of the world too. So. Uh, there's so much investment in tech. Mm -hmm. It is hyper competitive amongst the big tech companies too. And so, you know, so uh, you know, the best way to think about a company, I, I, I've always held the view that you tend to go wrong by focusing too much on competition. And big companies, particularly, mm -hmm. fail because they stumble internally. Mm -hmm. So, you want to be aware of everything that's going outside. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, your success depends on your execution. So, you know. So, well, that's the perfect thing. So, let's talk about AI and ethics. In 2000, 2022, members of your ethical team yeah. uh, resigned in a very public fashion around bias concerns. Um, you would claim that ethical research and research were crucial to the company's future. You're really betting on that. But something was not working. Um, it, 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 when AI has the potential to change cancer, to, to diagnose cancer, detect earthquakes, this alpha fold, replicate human conversation like we're talking about, it also could amplify biases against women and minorities, privacy threats, we don't know what's, what it's doing, carbon emissions, all, surveillance, all kinds of things. Talk a little bit about that experience and where you are right now. I know you hired Marion Croak um, about I wonder if an independent research like this, which is sort of count, could be counter to Google, can exist apart from your own self-interest. Look, I, first of all, uh, compared to most technologies we have developed, I think AI is very early on. Mm -hmm. We have started talking about it. So I think you know, that, that is a lot of progress and credit mm -hmm. to many people uh, who have highlighted the issues there. Mm -hmm. I think harnessing AI is going to be no different from other things we've had to harness as humanity. And, mm -hmm. I think early on talking about it, companies, public, uh, you know, governments, academic institutions, nonprofits, all of us have to play a role, and regulation has to play an important role. Uh, I would say there's a lot of publishing, uh, there's open sourcing uh, of, of models, mm -hmm. uh, there are independent people working on mm -hmm. it, uh, there are excellent companies like Hugging Face, mm -hmm. you know, which are right. smaller independent companies doing great work. So I see in this area, I see the amount the European Union is thinking about mm -hmm. AI regulation. So I think compared to most technology, I think structurally mm -hmm. we, are, we are beginning to do the right things. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to make responsible progress though. I think it's, it's going to be, uh, it, can, it can create a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's both. You just heard about the alpha fold example. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, I get you know, it. And, and so, you know, it's, it's a, so I think we have to be responsible. So what happened here, for, well, now that you're looking at it? I know you, uh, Jeff Dean has talked about it a little bit. You've tried to hire someone who's uh, a very well-regarded, woman of color, uh, to take on this issue. But still, it, it was quite controversial what happened. No, uh, you know, Look, when you're publishing in AI, and you know there are clear there were clear disagreements about, you know, what, you know the Google peer uh, review team what they felt was right to publish, and mm -hmm. I think there were differing opinions on it. I was publicly on record saying that we should have handled it better as a company. I think, mm -hmm. 
but you know, our commitment to investing in, you know, we've brought in more good people. Mm -hmm. The team has grown significantly since then. It's a large team. It's yeah. a large team, and you know, we've recently had James Manika mm -hmm. come in, mm -hmm. who runs technology and society, who's a deep AI expert as well. Mm -hmm. Marianne is building a team out. And more importantly, I don't think we alone can do the work. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for, it's important that there are independent voices out there. Right. Uh, because at the end of the day, we are going to have a point of view. Well, some of which you're not taking your money. Uh, we did stop taking your money over uh, some of it. Uh, you know, which I think is a good thing. I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think uh, it's good to have independent organizations which are not, uh, you know, financially beholden to any company. I think that's a good thing. So mm -hmm. I view all that as a, you know, maturing of a field like this mm -hmm. and, and the right things beginning to happen. Do you, do you think you can judge, your, grade yourselves? Like, I don't think I can grade, I mean, A, of course, but you know. Look, uh, uh, you know, if I look at the work we have done on AI ethics, mm -hmm. we are one of the largest publishers uh, in this area. Well, we've written hundreds of papers by now. We share information, we engage openly. You know, it's a cutting edge field, so sometimes we are on tip of tree, and you know, obviously we have concerns in certain areas. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we are learning and doing better, but uh, you know, I genuinely think we've approached it very responsibly. What would you do now in such a situation? Look, I, I think in some of these situations, I would, I would slow down, uh, get everyone to uh, talk it through and engage better. I think mm -hmm. things happen too quickly, uh, you know, so. Uh, you know, when you're a large company, sometimes we decentralize, allow things to happen. And with that comes speed, you're giving agency to more people, but sometimes you make mistakes. So I think that's the balance to uh, work through. Speaking of another thing related to AI systems about becoming sentient, you had the researcher, uh, Blake, uh, who it felt like he was in a version of Her, the movie Her. Um, I don't know what else I'm, uh, to say about it, but what, talk about that, what, what, why, why it ended up that way. You, you had pushed back rather hard on that. Look, I think I mean, that's a good example of where I think we slowed it down. We had our AI ethics mm -hmm. uh, teams, experts, look at the concerns, engage. While the answer was a bit obvious to many of us, mm -hmm. I think we followed all the processes, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we were very clear. I don't think... Lambda, which is our language model internally, is uh, sentient by any stretch of imagination, but shows you know uh, you know it was the story was much bigger than I expected. Yeah. But shows what people are uh, concerned about. I think uh, shows the kind of questions we will have to think well, about. We've seen one, the movies. Yeah, we've seen, we've I mean, seen the science, movies. Sci-fi has yeah. imagined this for a long time. So talk about the idea of sentience. Even if you've all determined Lambda is not. Where, what do you do when it starts going that way? When do you imagine that happening? Look, I, I, th I still think if there's ever. A, yeah, I still think there's a long way to, do, a long way to uh, go. I feel like I get into philosophical or a metaphysical mm -hmm. topic talking about what is sentience or what mm -hmm. is consciousness. I think the good news is we are far from it, and we may never get there, mm -hmm. right? And but I, you know, so I, I, I'm more focused on how can we. In technology, when it works well, is a gay, you know, just like when the internet came and when blogging came, mm -hmm. just gave access to more people to be able to mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. get their voice out. I think AI done correctly, you know, everyone should be able to have a tutor in their phone mm -hmm. on any topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very empowering to humanity. So I think we should be focused on that. I think it's important that we develop AI aligned with human values. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be it needs to be foundational, uh, you know, and and that needs to be embodied in any value system in which we develop AI. The good news is, is anyone who talks to Google Assistant, while I think it's the best product assistant out there on conversational AI, you still see how broken it is in certain mm -hmm. cases. Yeah, I never talked to them, <laughs> any of them. Yeah, so they're I mean, all look, off in my yeah, house. My so, son unplugged every one of them, which is great. Um, <laughs> so when you when you think about that, it goes right to content moderation. Now, one of the things. Facebook has gotten a lion's share of, of attacks. I would say Twitter is now sort of in that wash cycle, essentially. Most, one of the things I do get from a lot of the people at Facebook is, why aren't you looking at Google? Why are people beating up on Google? Why, what's going on there? Talk a little bit about the scrutiny that you get. You know, YouTube certainly has, but not, certainly not as much. Um, talk a little bit about uh, content moderation, because right now you're, you're involved in a mini controversy with True Social. Um, and you haven't allowed them in your app store, 
probably, I'm guessing you're correct because of violence and other things that you have. Um, talk a little bit about you, how you're thinking about this because it's something that I think every CEO of these companies that have these social apps are, must be tearing their hair out about, like what to do. I mean, look, it's a, it's a topic we've had to deal with a lot. I mean, just a few years ago, we had a, what we call a big brand safety. You know, we had uh, unsafe content for children on the platform. Mm -hmm. We learned it. We understood the patterns of what was happening. And, you know, we, we called an internal code mm -hmm. yellow to uh, fix it. And so we, we definitely, you know, as, as a company, I think we face a lot of scrutiny. And, you know, and, and, and I think it's important. What has helped us, I think, in our mission statement is to provide high quality information. That's mm -hmm. what search is about. It's ranking. Mm -hmm. It's always been for us about, for 22 years, about ranking higher quality information. And so for YouTube, I think. Well, Google's different. Like when you go to Google and you search something, you get what you're looking for. YouTube is a very different creature. But we brought, one of the biggest things we did for YouTube is made content responsibility. Susan and team for a while now has, have made <laughs> content. Whiskey. Yeah, the CEO of YouTube has made content responsibility the main pillar. And so we brought a lot of notions of what we do in search to YouTube. So for example, on, on uh, areas which are prone to misinformation, we raise, we rank higher what we call authoritative information, including journalistic sources. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was to do with COVID, uh, you know, we would rank public health organizations, uh, medical institutions, journalistic content mm -hmm. higher. So you know, we brought the same principles which we use in search to YouTube. So I, you know, I, I don't think it's a question of scrutiny as much as we worked hard to move the needle. Mm -hmm. We publish what we call as violative view rate. Uh, it's obviously a large system, you know, you, you know, so you statistically work hard to make it mm -hmm. better. So I feel like we put a lot of work into it. It's consistent with our mission. It's mm -hmm. what I think we, we have learned over time to do well. But people think it's too slow still, obviously. Yeah. You know, it took for, uh, for a long time for you to move on Alex Jones, for you to move on Trump. It took the insurrection, ultimately. Still off the platform, correct? Off the uh, for new videos, yes, yeah. Till when? You know, there's a team which assesses it on a periodic basis, and if the recommendation changes, you know, we'll make a decision. You make that decision, though, right? If, if the recommendation changes and comes to me, yes, for Comes sure. to you, and you made that decision at the time. Along with, along with uh, Susan and team, yes. So what went into that? Because obviously it's, it's, a, it's like a third rail kind of grabbing it. Look, it was very specifically uh, post January 6th and mm -hmm. you know, clearly seeing at that moment uh, you know, uh, the risk of violence associated with, it, with, with that. I think we made a decision. You know, look, as a platform, we're very committed to freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's part of what YouTube uh, success is enabling everyone. So we take, you know, it's always, a tough decision, uh, you know, and we err on the side of making sure, you know, we can give protect freedom of speech. I think it's it's easy to make decisions the other way, and it's tough to know when you lose freedom of speech in a society. I think it's important to remember that. And so, but you know, look, uh, when it comes to Ukraine and Russia, we made a lot of decisions. Yes. But when society agrees on decisions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people generally think we are doing a good job. When society is very divided mm -hmm. on a particular topic, that's when uh, these become harder. So in some ways, you know, we are trying to make a decision in an area where people fundamentally see it differently. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that becomes more challenging. So I don't think this is an easy area. So what do you do now? What do you do now? Because right now you're in this back and forth with true social. Um, uh, I tend to believe you over Devin Nunes. I will tell that, say that. Um, but they're saying they're waiting for you. You're saying they're waiting for them to, con to make it, to clean it up, essentially. Look, uh, I mean, Truth Social is only recently available for uh, Android. I Android, think right. Uh, yeah, and, and they submitted, like we've gone through with other developers. Yes. Uh, you know, look, there are minimum standards for uh, content moderation, we expect, mm -hmm. mainly uh, can use this report do you have a, a mechanism in place to remove direct violent con content, which calls for violence, et cetera? Right. And so I think we are in a consultative process. Maybe we just had Parler approved. You did. But they actually implemented uh, mm -hmm. the basic policies we require. So there is, you know, I think we are in a process through which, mm -hmm. and my sense is the Truth Social team is working on it and implementing mm -hmm. those things. So I think, you know, and, and there are, experts who evaluate these things and, you know, which are in the play developer team. Do you feel like you get dragged into these things? Because then they could make it a political thing. It's obviously your leftist. You're trying to put free speech, this and that, in, the, in this case. 
And then the, it happens on the other side too. Yeah. Almost always we rely on, you know, this is why it's important to have teams and processes. Mm -hmm. So you let the you know, right mechanisms work through. Mm -hmm. And in extraordinary cases, we get involved, but you know, rarely felt the need to change the course of the recommendation coming from So now from you, you, you banned Trump indeterminate amount of time. You know, the, the account is still there. All the videos are viewable. Uh, the, the ability to upload new videos is, right. uh, is not available on the platform right now. But I, it was never a very active platform, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think. Uh, this was where there was a lot of activity going on either. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where. Well, that's not an excuse. So, I mean, what are you going to do? What, what? You know, uh, look, I think we'll assess the situation. I do think it's important, uh, you know, as I say, we have policies in place. We have clear ways by which people can come back. Almost always, I think it's important to give, protect and give freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So that's the general lens with which we will do. Do you think it's been too pulled into freedom of speech when it's really about other, or is that really the center? Because sometimes I feel that Facebook and others use freedom of speech to hide just bad management. Like they don't manage it well, they didn't see it, they didn't know it, because everybody moved on Alex Jones after Apple moved on Alex Jones, but not before, even though they had said free speech, free speech, and then they just moved. What? Look, I mean, I think there are cases where we leave content up and we defend it. So I think, mm -hmm. I think the issue is mm -hmm. uh, more nuanced. I think, you know, uh, it's important. There have been many times in the course of history where a small set of people have had an opinion and, mm -hmm. you know, people have tried to suppress it. That's and right. so I think, I think it's important to protect it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what the internet enables too. Uh, you know, you're absolutely right. There's a, uh, uh, you have to balance it against hate speech, harassment, threat of violence, and, and inherently there is a balance here. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any silver bullet, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, which is why we have a three strikes policy. We consult with experts, write policies. Mm -hmm. So when it came to terrorism, we consulted with many nonprofits, law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We constantly refine policies. And mm -hmm. so you apply yourself to get better at this. One thing that people worry about is I agreed with the decision, but the two people made it was disturbing to me, right? That's what it was like, Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg and, and Susan. Three people made this decision. I, look, I think, first of all, this is why I think it's important to have many platforms out there, mm -hmm. uh, many platforms out there. And over time, there could be more direct regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, and I think that could help in some of these areas as well. So your efforts around the election, what are you doing around that now? Um, You've had some learnings for the past election cycles. Um, you have a pilot program allowing political campaigns to evade spam detection, for example. Controversial in some ways. Um, talk about what you think you need to do right now for the next two elections. We're still in a really partisan state, a very high level of rancor. I mean, we've all come a long way, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, very aware, we have uh, election integrity teams which are looking at it seriously. I think the cybersecurity interference from foreign sources is something which is always a big source of concern. Yeah, I was just talking about. Yeah, and you, know, you heard from uh, Andy Berger as well. And I think, I think it's important. I think there is a lot more information sharing uh, now uh, of threats, and we all assess it. So there's more collaboration than ever before. So I think we're all more aware there are better teams. A lot of preparation goes into it. Mm -hmm. So I, f you know, I feel better going into it, but you know, you're only as good as your last uh, mistake. And so I think, I think you know, we have to be very, very watchful. So in that vein, what are you doing post Roe v. Wade world where protect users sensitive health data? You saw what happened around um, Facebook. Um, I don't necessarily think it's their fault necessarily. It's they, were, they were given a, a valid subpoena. Um, but abortion information uh, period tracking, obviously if you search on Google, uh, advertisements that misleading direct users to anti-abortion pregnancy crisis centers. I know I talked to Susan about um, anti-gay groups putting ads in the feed of gay sites, and then it was an ad, and so it wasn't hate speech necessarily. Um, what are you doing post Roe v. Wade? Because Google has so much information. I do spend a lot of time saying, when Google's saying, would you like to sign on? I'm like, I would not like to sign on. I worry about it much more than before. So in this Roe v. Wade situation, this is a perfect example of for people using Google and all these services. How do you assess your responsibility and what, where are you willing to stand up and not let the government get this information? 
Look, um, the, it's obviously a very complex area. Definitely when people are coming and looking for information, we've been very focused on making sure we can provide accurate information. Mm -hmm. So recently we rolled out changes to make sure we can certify whether a, whether a, whether a provider actually provides abortion or not. Mm -hmm. and, and we both have mechanisms to verify and then we mm -hmm. disclose that and we require disclosure on the advertising side as well. So that's an example of the kind of change to make sure we're bringing higher quality information mm -hmm. to bear at a moment like that. Uh, you know, we, we've constantly giving incognito modes and more privacy friendly modes to uh, look for information. We now give various auto delete options uh, so that you can delete information continuously. And look, on this area, I think we have a long standing record of pushing back against what we feel are overbroad not due process requests, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I think that track record of what we do will apply to this case as well, mm -hmm. and, and we'll give transparency to the extent. So if it, it, could you just do it, because we're not just not gonna give it to you, we're gonna fight you? Do you see yourself in a fight with Texas, or one of these states that is really being very aggressive from a, from a, from a police point of view? If you feel it's overbroad, and uh, you know, we will, we will fight it. Uh, this is an evolving area. I think all of us will have to watch what's happening. And mm -hmm. to the extent if we're uncomfortable with something, I think we'll speak up about it. And you know, and so that's the, that's the plan. And so, but again, to me, over time we need privacy legislation to protect people's privacy mm -hmm. on topics like this. Mm -hmm. I think because you're always going to. I know as a large company, people look at us, but when I look at all the way information can get out, mm -hmm. there are many other weaker points of attack through which people can get the information, including location information, et cetera. So I think unless there is robust privacy protection in this modern digital age, US still doesn't have federal privacy legislation. I think, I know we are talking about this issue, but there are a whole set of issues on which yeah. people are vulnerable, right? You know, you could be a gay kid in a place mm -hmm. where that information is sensitive and so I think the issue goes far broader. Uh, Do you feel like you have a bigger social responsibility? And, and to pick and choose, we are gonna be pro-abortion, we're gonna be pro-gay. Look, I mean, I think it's important we are an information company, we, we are objective in how we provide information. We deeply care about the welfare of our employees and mm -hmm. so there are many issues on which if it touches the welfare of our employees, we make sure we, 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 we address it where appropriate. But I think as an information company, I think, I think we take that very seriously, objectively, uh, and, and I think that's, that's entirely, it's sacrosanct for us to, you know, how we approach search, how we rank search. Mm -hmm. So I view that as separate mm -hmm. uh, from how. From doing that. Yeah. But do you think companies should be more socially active? Look, I think each company should be very clear about uh, the causes which they care about, you mm -hmm. know, and, and be, be clear so that people understand. Uh, but I also think companies are a place where people come to get work done, and so mm -hmm. you can be a clearing, place, a clearing place for all that affects society. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think there has to be a balance. Is there too. anything that sticks with you that you think is critically important, a social issue happening now? I mean, we both be it be it on sustainability, mm -hmm. I think we've clearly uh, uh, stood for, Google has been carbon neutral since 2007. Mm -hmm. We've been very public about our goals as a company. I think we have, we have commitment to building a, a diverse and equitable workplace mm -hmm. in terms of our employees. So these are all issues we passionately care about. We are open about it and, uh, you know, and so we care about access to knowledge and computing. Uh, so, you know. Do you feel pressure now that the partisanship is so high, the rancor is so high? Yeah, look, I, I think tech touches society a lot and in any area where there's a lot of division, I think it's tough, you know, you get, you get pulls from both sides. Mm -hmm. But I think as a, as a company, it's important to be focused at the end of the day, the best way Google can impact the world is through our mission and our products. Mm -hmm. Everything else is, uh, uh, you know, uh, on top of it, and so I think I think it's important to keep that in mind, and and you know and that's the best way I think we can impact the world, and so you use it to guide the company. So let's talk about the impact of the economy on Google. Sluggish growth rate this year, uh, in this quarter. Need you talked about the need to cut back spending. You have something called a simplicity sprint, very lovely term. You recently reported lowest quarterly growth in two years. It doesn't mean it's not growing. 
it's growing uh, compared to other businesses. So what is the cause of the slowdown uh, and how are you thinking about it, especially around uh, productivity? I know you've, Mark Zuckerberg has talked about that, you've talked about this. Um, how do you improve productivity and where do you, what are you worried about in the economy given the results you just? Look, I mean, as I said in the last earnings call, uh, look, I mean, we, I mean the, we, you know, the more we try to understand the macroeconomic, I mean, you feel very uncertain about it. There are a set of positive factors, there are a set of negative factors, and there's inherent uncertainty in the economy. So that's the macroeconomic outlook, and, and the macroeconomic performance is correlated to ad spend, consumer spend, and so on. And so we are not, you know, as a company, we get impacted by all that. Mm -hmm. To me, those are all factors outside our control. What you can focus on is what you're prioritizing. I think pandemic has been a huge source of change. All of us are working differently. Mm -hmm. You know, want to make sure as a company, when you have fewer resources than before, you're prioritizing on the right things to be working on, and your employees are really productive, that they can actually have impact on the things they are working mm -hmm. on. So, you know, that, that's what we are uh, spending our time on. I think any time a company grows over a period of time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you end up being less efficient. It's the natural order. What areas are less efficient from your perspective at Google? Across everything we do. Alphabet, I, 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 you know, across everything we do, I think with scale, uh, you, can, you can be slower to make decisions. Uh, you know, there are more people to approve yeah. things. So, you know, you look at it end to end, and, and figure out how to make the company 20% more productive. I think mm -hmm. it's something we have to do always, but I find moments like this particularly helpful mm -hmm. because you take a breather and really focus on it right. to set the company well for the next decade or for so. For another thing, because someone had called uh, Google a golden cage to me, like that people are just, you know, and you've seen it depicted on Silicon Valley, they're all up on the roof. Uh, resting, investing, essentially. Never watched Silicon Valley. Never, never. Too close to home. Oh, really? Uh, there wasn't a character. <laughs> you, wa you watched TV to relax. There was so. not. There was an. There was an. Er, there was an Eric Schmidt character, but not a you character. Um, how do you improve productivity? Is it layoffs or changes in where you focus people, or are there areas of growth that you're focusing on and ones that you're saying no, that's enough of that? No, I, look, I'm talking about sometimes this productivity. Uh, you know, it's about sometimes there are duplicate. So, for example, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. We had YouTube Music and Google Play Music. Yes. Right, aligning them into one product yeah, and making sure we are clearly this, focused yeah. on is an example of productivity improvement I'm talking yeah. about. Sometimes there are areas to make progress. You have three people mm -hmm. making decisions. Mm -hmm. Understanding that and bringing it down to two or one, mm -hmm. you know, improves your velocity mm -hmm. by 20%. So I'm talking about things is like that. Is there any unit of Google you're like, I've had enough of this? Any, you, any unit of Google that you've just, I'm like, you know, no, no, no more. Uh, look, I think we are, but there's always at any given time, you may look at some project and say, this is better done differently, mm -hmm. or someone outside is doing better. If, if you as a company, you don't think you're doing something well, you shouldn't be in it for the sake of being in it, mm -hmm. right? And, is there and, something you think you're not doing well? I mean, a, a while ago, I mean, G Plus was a good example of it. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, I, I, I mean, <laughs> Look, I mean, it was clearly, we all knew that at the start, though. Uh, no, but, you know, it's an example of, but, you know, you had to make the decision to, you know, stop doing it and, yeah. and move forward. You uh, thought that, too, then, didn't you? Oh. It was terrible. <laughs> I always thought, how could people who are the least social people I've ever met in Silicon Valley make a social network? But, okay, just, that was one of my... Look, it, it, the product didn't get traction, so it was an easy yeah. decision to make. But, yeah. you know, look, even out of an effort like that, that's how we build Google Photos, right? And okay. it's the same G Plus team. Yeah. People who are within the G Plus team figured out a better way to store and organize photos. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, out of every good effort, there's always something wonderful to be had. Oh, if you, you're good. Yeah, so. Yeah. Those circles, what the hell? Anyway, I'm not gonna, <laughs> but what is something that you think you're missing in, in that area, in the product area? I know you've been working on, um, uh, and we're going to get to acquisitions and regulation in a second, but you've been working on uh, an a, a, a advanced tech unit to read body language. That sounds terrifying. Um, what, what, are the thing, what is something that you think is really interesting that you're all working on? Look, I, I mean, I, I, I think the work we are doing around, you know, the newer AI models, which are uh, really, you know, shows a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. uh, just in the last year. Cars? Uh, cars, uh, you know, I mean, last year, the fatalities in the U.S. grew by 10%. It's the highest it's been in the last 15 years. So it's clearly an unsolved problem. And, and you know, uh, we now are able to operate Waymo in urban, dense environments. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, the progress we've made there. Uh, it'll still take time, but all that is you know, path breaking. I think robotics is an interesting area. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about uh, applying AI to healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the like modernity. an alpha fold or uh, whatever. That's right, and you know, partnering with the healthcare companies. So, but even something like Google Assistant, to going back to where you started from, mm -hmm. I think you know, being able to tell Google Assistant, you know, I want to learn something and actually have it help you learn mm -hmm. that over a period of six months. I think those are all use cases which will happen, and they are very profound, and we aren't there yet. So let's talk about competition and regulation. You discussed TikTok as a threat, as many people have today. Um, FCC commissioner, one of them, asked you to, they asked a lot of things in press releases, asked you to move from the app store. Are you, how do you look at them, especially with their links? Look, I, mean, I, meant, I didn't government. say this, you asked me what, what I view as competition. I think, you know, something, it shows how dynamic the field is. Mm -hmm. You know, think about the ad space. Mm -hmm. You know, TikTok is projected to have 12 billion, based on public reports, mm -hmm. uh, 12 billion in ad revenue. Amazon, which wasn't in the, in the ad industry, has $30 billion in ad mm -hmm. revenue this mm -hmm. year. Apple is building an ad business. So to me, competition in tech is hyper intense. And so it can come from anywhere, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and you know, th that's the point I was making. Specifically on TikTok, I think to me, uh, you know, I think as YouTube, I think, I, I, yeah. you, you know, it's an opportunity as well. You're doing but YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts, which is, you know, off to a great start, has a lot mm -hmm. of great traction. It allows us to tap more creators. I think one of the things the short form brings on is many more people are creators now mm -hmm. compared to long form content where most people just view content. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a profound change. It's an exciting change for the platform. And so we are embracing it, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited by it. You still own, you still have 28% of the digital ad market. Facebook has 23, Amazon's 11. So you feel that it's competitive. We just mentioned, I mean, yeah. Apple is growing, TikTok is growing, Microsoft just did a contract with Netflix, one of the biggest ad deals uh, mm -hmm. ever done. Mm -hmm. In any other market, if I you would look- I thought they would go with you. Why didn't they go with you? Oh, you know, I mean, uh, it's a question for Reed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, but you know, look, I, I, to me, it shows that there is competition in the space. I mean, you're, you're now talking about multiple companies, and there are very good companies like Trade Desk and so on. So, mm -hmm. shows how vibrant mm -hmm. this market is. It looks nothing like it looked a few years ago. Sure. So that gets us to search, which your market share is high 80s globally, low 90s in the United States. That's pretty big. That's a pretty good market share. You are under two cases with the DOJ, um, uh, alleging that you dominate the online search market in violation of antitrust laws or some other investigations going on. How do you look at, at these? You think they're too late? Many people think they move too slowly, but they also never moved before. Look, uh, you know, first of all, we'll engage constructively through the process. I mean, these are important processes, and we'll take them seriously. You know, I think it's important for me when I look at me, you're talking about how general search market works, but you know, it's like saying there's a general homepage market share and who had the share before. To me, that's not, we are not in this. We are trying to provide people with information. Mm -hmm. You know, Siri and Alexa to your start is another way for you to get information. Mm -hmm. We make money on commercial searches, but you think about either coming to Google search or maybe you go to Amazon directly to do that. You know, if 90 you're looking- 90% of the market's pretty big. No, but that is uh, artificially that. defined market as general okay. search, which means nothing. You know, if, if I look at my, the younger generation, many of them just get the information they want from social networks. Mm -hmm. They won't even come and query, you know, so I think, it, it, you know, I genuinely think it's more dynamic than, uh, you know, people are looking at it. At least that's how, when I run the company on, wake up on a Monday and think about it. Right. I, 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 you know, for me, so it's So how are you dealing with them? Because that, that's sort of the argument. Well, too late. You got here too late. It's changed. That's now. not. That's that's not what I'm saying. Look, I, I think it's important that these things get looked at. Uh, I think there are well-established frameworks by which you assess whether a market is competitive. Mm -hmm. There are robust consumer welfare standards. Are prices going up or down? There are many ways to look at it. So there are experts who are going to look at it. All I am saying is, outside of all that, do I feel? Do I wake up mm -hmm. and and worry about? Uh, all the stuff that's coming down? Absolutely. I think, you know, in the consumer internet space, you have to earn it every year, I think, if you're slightly behind. Mm -hmm. You lose traction on a product. I think it's always been true and it'll continue to be true. Do you expect them to, to file a lawsuit against you? Look, I mean, I can't come, I, I don't know what they are thinking and, you know, I, my guidance to our teams is to be 
respectful and engaged like we have done in Europe. Uh, I think as a company, uh, I think, you know, we think we have done things correctly. We have been competitive, pro-competitive, and we continue to innovate and we invest and build better products. And so I think when people are given choice, uh, you know, for, for gender search, most people would choose Google. Do, do you think Amy Klobuchar is breaking the internet? You've spent a lot of money pushing back on the antitrust bill. Amazon also, also Facebook, others. First of all, I have a lot of respect for Senator Klobuchar, and uh, I think I think I understand. First of all, across all countries, given the scale at which tech works, it is the right role of uh, be it elected officials or regulators to look at tech. And I think that's a natural evolution for the tech industry. The tech industry will be regulated. So you know, I have a healthy view on all that. And you know, uh, I think I think. If you surveyed most American consumers, mm -hmm. the top issues they would talk about are privacy, safety of children online. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, that's where I would start with. Those are what affects consumers on a day-to-day -day basis most, I, I think. And she that's feels what feels lack of competition is what creates that, of course. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. When I look at the privacy issues, you know, you mentioned mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. around abortion and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it applies across all services. So I, I just don't see how the competition bill is going to get to a better outcome there. Better outcome then. All right, last question, then we'll get to questions. So we got to get to dinner. Um, one of the things that started is you don't buy much anymore. You've bought two security companies, Mandiant, uh, and it's, it's Simplify, whatever these names, um, uh, which is security orchestration, automation, and response. Um, do you feel like you can't buy anything? Look, I mean, we just bought Fitbit and Fitbit, uh, yeah. uh, closed it, she and it. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be on our watch soon coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I I think we 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 one of the things Google has been good at for a long time is we proactively look at something and saying, consistent with antitrust laws, can we buy? So we we've tried hard to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. So there are things we, we just can't we, touch, you know, and we don't, and you know, we have good internal teams which look at it. Having said that, there are many areas where we see opportunities too, but I, we only want to buy something which we think is good and fundamentally us by bringing it within the company mm -hmm. can build on it and do something more with it. So I think it's a process which we will continue, we will we'll be active. Did you look at Twitter? Uh, through, through this round, no. No, what do you think it's gonna happen? You gonna look at it again? If... I, no, I mean, look, I, I, I think, <laughs> I think the October, uh, the four days. I, I may get some popcorn and watch the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. You, you can know. just you uh, can just do a shrug and go. Ah, no, no. no what look, about something like Pinterest? Uh, you know, look, me. I can't comment on a few uh, any M and A deal or uh, you know. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. But you're very good at asking the question. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> anyway, let's get to questions from the audience. We only have a few seconds for dinner. Thank you Hi, guys Sandra. for sticking around. Go for it. Hi, Sundar. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you have lighter store. Yep. Managing partner of Wild Ventures. We focus on security, so really appreciate your acquisition of Mandiant. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that we haven't discussed uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, on the stage yet, Kara. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, you know, with I, last time I checked, about a nine percent market share. Um, mm -hmm. Amazon and Microsoft are doing such an amazing job. Um, Amazon's reinvented itself around cloud. Andy Jassy, now the CEO, Microsoft, uh, doing an amazing job there. Um, you guys are not doing so great, and uh, yeah, just wondering. Can I just Why? say, he and I had lunch, and I said that t five, six years ago, remember? I'm like, what's with cloud? He's like, we were busy doing other things. I'm like, you're an idiot, like, because Amazon had come in and done it. Do you remember that when I called you an idiot at lunch that you paid for? But talk about she that. She has done that a few times. Yes, sorry. that's okay. <laughs> Why with the cloud? Look, I mean, I, first of all, I mean, it's a business. We have segmented our results there. Look, I mean, it's one of our fastest growing businesses. It's a multi-billion, I mean, it'll be tens of billions of dollars for us in revenue and, and we are committed to building a profitable business. It's so early in that sector, you know, when you look at the percentage of workloads that have transformed. Cloud for us is not just GCP, it's Google Workspace. So we take a long-term view. Uh, you know, when I look at the future of cloud, if I take a decade outlook, will be about bringing AI capabilities to the world. And, you know, I think uh, you know, today already we win deals because of our leadership in AI. So I feel very comfortable about what we do, be it on AI, data analytics, or cybersecurity. You mentioned Mandiant. So 
we take a long-term view, and, and you know, I'm glad we are competing hard. You know, she talked about competition. It's an example of an area where we are coming in and competing against established players. Anytime you do that, you start small and you work your way, but you have a long-term view. Okay, I'm gonna, they said to take one question, but I'm gonna take a few, too bad. Sorry, I run this so, place. Go ahead. quickly on the social quickly. responsibility. Right. I'm gonna get to you, don't worry. Following quickly on the social responsibility question, um, in countries that have faced threats similar to what we face in the U.S. today, ultimately it's been business leaders speaking out publicly that's been critical in protecting democracy. Yeah. No democracy, no rule of law, no rule of law, someone like my pillow guy is running Google, right? So what, is democracy a stakeholder in your business and, and how do you balance aggressively protecting democracy with business interests, if so? It's a great question. That's well, another lunch I call them an idiot about the Muslim ban, remember? I told you to write a big S. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, look, I, I mean, this is, this is something we have worked on for a long time. So for example, very early on G, in Gmail, we would warn, you know, when we felt there were authoritarian governments targeting human rights activists, we would give notifications. Today we issue transparency reports on content takedowns. And so these are long-standing values for us. And, but I would say as a company, we will do everything. But I think you know, others, I mean, the US has a strong role to play, I think, here, and other uh, leading democratic countries. So this goes beyond one company. I think one of the worries I have is in an increasingly polarized political debate, sometimes we forget the important values which we need to advocate for around, around the world and, uh, and the commitment that we need there. Right here. We're going to do very quick, very quick. Hi, Pam Dillon, co-founder of Preferably. My question, I feel like it's a softball after your last two, but can you talk a little bit about commerce? Can you talk about shopping? Can you talk about your aspirations uh, singularly and also in the context of Amazon? I mean, it's, a, it's an important area for us. I, I think to, uh, to the answer I was giving to Kara's question, it's a very competitive vertical, right? And I think it's a good example of, it doesn't feel like you have 80 to 90% search market share because it makes no sense, right? When people are looking for shopping, we compete with Amazon and others, right? And, and, and so to me, for, uh, you know, I'm excited on the journey we have on. Uh, we are really working with merchants, partnering with companies like Shopify, enabling merchants uh, to be more easily discoverable and have a better experience when consumers come looking for information. That includes being able to discover when you like something, being able to transact easily, and knowing when the thing will come. So it's an end-to-end journey. And that's the progress we are making. We are seeing good traction on the work we are doing. And, and so, uh, you know, uh, excited about the progress there. Okay, we're gonna take two more quick questions. You, short, um. Luther. Google gives Apple about or over $15 billion a year for the defaults on iOS and Safari. Why is being the default so expensive? Look, may I, I, these are you know, any commercial deals between uh, the companies. This is in the public domain as a result of the US first Google trial. So Google's giving Apple over $15 billion per year for the defaults on iOS and Safari. Why, why is it so? expensive to be, as being the default, why is that so expensive? I mean, at a high level, we have a lot, I mean, historically, we have done distribution deals across platforms. So if a platform provider, like, you know, Fire, Mozilla had done it before, they have commercial distribution deals, and like, you know, and so we see value in, you know, we compete for those distribution deals. I think it's no different from if you have a product and in a retailer, you compete for space and placement, and I think so to me, these are standard commercial distribution deals we do across platforms. It just, it just seems that that uh, flies in the face of your claim that there is you know, consumer choice and that competition's only a click away. I mean, it seems like Google's not taking any chances. No, there are platforms on which we are not the defaults too, so we evaluate every deal on its merits, so there are cases in which we walk away from deals uh, if you feel the value isn't there. Uh, and there are cases in which, you know, just because you have a default, people change defaults too. So, you know, so there are varying ways in which this works. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, complex way. You know, I, I think as a company, it's important to make your services available to users as conveniently as possible. I think, I think it's, it makes natural sense for every company to want to do that, so. Yeah, you also has, have $15 billion and DuckDuckGo doesn't, but go ahead. 
Uh, hi, sir. Hi. Uh, um, uh, my, my name is Sid Wilson. This is the, the last question. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. We've got to go. I'll be, I'll be quick on this. My okay. name is Sid Wilson. I'm the president and CEO for the Hispanic Association on Corporate Responsibility. Um, I want to ask a question about diversity and inclusion, uh, a topic that hasn't really been discussed. Is as CEO and as some, a, lead, a leader in the industry, um, what do you believe is your role to uh, foster change and evolution to create more diversity and inclusion for people of color, particularly women of color, that are lacking in the executive roles throughout Silicon Valley, not just at Google? Because I recognize it's not just, not just a Google issue, it is an industry issue, but given your role as, as a leader, what do you believe is your uh, role to help foster that solution? Look, I think the tech industry as a whole, uh, you know, uh, needs to do a lot more. What we have done as a company, this has been an important thing for us. We, you know, we, we, are, we, we issue transparency reports and over the past couple of years, we've articulated clear five-year goals, including our commitment uh, to have uh, representation at all levels in the company and we have uh, goals and you know we issue transparency reports. Your board is quite diverse comparatively, uh, but it's a the low board bar. The diverse, but executive committees tend to be Yes. Uh, far less diverse. Yeah, and you know it's work in progress. And but I think, look, we 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 make our commitment. We need to be accountable, and we are we track this across across the company, and we are clearly making progress. And we'll stay the course till we uh, make that. But I think it's an important topic. I also think as a company, for us, it's equally important to make sure all this works well through our products as well. So the same issues you talk about, you know, making sure our platforms are, are uh, working well, representative, and, and, and addressing issues of inequity, too, are equally important. All right, I'm sorry, thank we got to go. Sundar, thank you. How long are you going to stay CEO of Google? Just curious. <laughs> I'll take it a day at a time. Okay, yeah. great. All thank right, you. thank you. Thank you.